this episode of Riding the Edge, I'm headed to the William L. Finley Wildlife Refuge in the Willamette Valley of Oregon. I'm on my annual wintertime visit with a few seats of T-Max 100, a 4x5 camera, and a new lens. I'm not looking for wildlife, I'm looking for habitat. I'm looking for landscape photo possibilities. Why don't you come along for the ride? My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. I wanted to be a landscape photographer. But with a family to feed and bills to pay, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. It was time to follow my passion. Come along on my journey to become the best black and white photographer I can be. Whether it be film or digital, I will be sharing what I learned through my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is Brighton the Edge. It's getting a little too crowded. I'm gonna I think I'll head to another part of the wildlife refuge. I've been gone for a while, so I thought we'd do a little catch up. There's quite a few people out here today. I got a shot on the boardwalk, it's just one frame. Once I get to a better location, we'll uh, have a little chat about what I've been up to and what I've got here today. What keeps me coming back to this piece of public land? It's the diversity. There's so much here. It's this pretty small area, but you've got wetland marshes, oak savanna, stands of evergreen trees. It's, it's just a, a great place to do landscape photography. There's so much potential here. It's also a great location to break in a new lens. Now the light's not great, the, the sky lacks texture and it's kind of bright. But I think that can help bring out the subject, which is this beautiful old oak. It'll help bring out the darker twisted branches, kind of put emphasis on the shape. I really like photographing this oak. I've come here and photographed it a number of times. It's probably not the best light for photographing this oak, but it's another look, it, it, it's another season. I'll be back again. <laughs> I'll be back to photograph this oak again at some point. So what I've been up to for the last month. <laughs> it's been a, probably about a month since I put up a, a video. So over the last month I sold my backup digital camera, my D750, and got enough money to buy a 90 millimeter, which is wide angle and 4x5. A very clean, very, uh, very good shape lens. I really wanted something that was going to last me a while. I didn't want anything beat up. This doesn't, this lens looks new. It doesn't even look like it's been hardly used. Not, not a mark on it. So I was very happy to get this, this lens. 
my my goal was to either get a 75 or a 90, whatever came along first, and and the, was in the best shape, and the 90 came along, so that's that's what I went with, and that's what I used to use, so it, it's pretty familiar to me. It's probably one of my most used 4x5 lenses. It's just um, not super wide, but wide enough to feel like a wide-angle lens. Over this uh, over this period, I I started thinking about where. What have I done to get me to this point? What is it, um, why now do I feel like 4x5 is something I want to use? It has taken me quite a while, a good two or three years since I left journalism to be at this point where I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay with not taking tons of gear. I'm okay with not taking tons of photographs and running around like a chicken with his head cut off. I'm really finding my way back to why I started photography in the first place. That interaction with nature in a more contem contemplative way. Journalism, after doing it for 25 years, it pretty much stomped out my my love of photography. I was just seeing it as a job. It wasn't, the passion wasn't really all there. It was just, you know, get a photograph to tell the story. I, I you know, I, I liked, I liked it. I liked doing photography for a living. But after you've done thousands of assignments, it just, it's just work, you know, it's just a job. And it's taken me quite a while to get to the point where I kind of have that love for it again, that passion. I can see it as an art form now. I wasn't, I wasn't seeing that before. Shooting large format is such a different approach. I think my videos are going to end up being quite a bit different here on out when I'm shooting 4x5. Probably a lot less compositions. Well, I can I can guarantee there will be a, a lot less compositions. Each shot takes quite a bit longer to set up. I may not do a lot of talking while I'm setting up my camera. You may hear more from me after I've Made the photo, at least for for a while, till I uh, get a little more uh, comfortable with the uh, the regiment setting up the camera and, and all that stuff. Plus, if I if the lights changing quick, I'm gonna want to work fast, and that's a bit more challenging for, when you're using large format. <laughs> This is another example of an area that many may not find all that beautiful or have impact for a photograph. But to me, it's an ecosystem that I find has so much potential for landscape photography. Sure, it's a bit messy. Often that's, that's just nature. That's what nature is. It just means you have to work a little harder to make something that works as a photograph. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes the hard work pays off. Well, I just made a shot of this, this little stream kind of running through the stand of trees. It's pretty mucky in here. I think this is kind of like overflow over <laughs> from from nearby creek. It's kind of a, I kind of like how it kind of snakes through the trees. Well, I've, I've got three compositions. We're tearing it up right now. <laughs> I don't want to be a content creator. I want to be a photographer that uh, makes videos while he's out making photos. The story of how these those film photos came about, the story of what I did to get those images. I think that you can learn just as much from that as you can 
having somebody tell you what their settings are. Well, I'm only going to have a few compositions today, two or three maybe, and I'm okay with that. Maybe it's not about the quantity, maybe it's about the quality of the experience. I think that's what I'm wanting out of my photography right now. Just one more shot before I go. When nature seems cluttered and hard to make order out of chaos, then it's time to just get a little bit closer. I came across this, this uh, moss-covered tree in a densely wooded area, and I really was attracted to the texture and the moss, but the only way to really photograph it was just to get close. I think it works. I really do like the shot. As I grow as a photographer over the years, I'm coming to the realization that it's okay to just get one composition. It's okay to miss a shot because I wasn't carrying the right lens or the right film. It's okay to go out and not make any photos. It's okay to fail. It's okay to not take hundreds of shots, just settling on a few. It's okay to make your own way. It's okay not to shoot color. For me, for you, it may be okay not to shoot black and white, or digital, or film. It's okay to keep it simple. It's okay to carry one, two, or three prime lenses, as long as you're doing photography the way you want to do it. It's okay. <laughs> it's taken me a long time to come to the realization and give myself permission just to say it's okay. Nowadays, cameras are just too too easy to use. <laughs> I don't want to work for my art. Crazy fool.